Good day, everyone. Welcome to today's Friday Fundamentals session. My name is Brent Hindman. I'll be your uh, trainer, if you like, um, for the next 45 minutes to an hour. We'll see how it goes as far as how long it takes to get through some of the content that I have prepared for you today. What we are going to be working on today is um, generating a bathroom, uh, taking a look at some of the features that will enhance your 3Ds uh, and help you to generate the, the bathroom images that you would like for your customers and uh, generate the bathroom designs that you'd like for your customers. Um, to say that uh, everything would go smoothly would be um, brash of me. Some things will need a little bit of trial and error, as you would find if you're going through a design. Um, today's class will be, will be recorded, so you can come back and visit it at a later date. Uh, it'll be available on our YouTube channel. Uh, I'm going to close out the chat for today. Uh, we won't have time for questions throughout the, the session. It's more of a, a guided tour of what I, I have for you today. Um, there again, if you need to revisit what we've done, uh, feel free to go back to the videos once they've been posted within the next few days after today's class. So I'm just going to close out the chat. Um, I trust that you can see my screen okay and hear my voice fine. I did a check just before the class. If you're having any trouble, please contact our um, our support office, and they can help you get into the get get going again. All right. Um, as you can see on the screen, I've got a couple images up for you. Uh, this is just a run through that I did earlier in the week. Basically, uh, two views, one from the from the bathtub end, looking backwards towards the doors into a master bedroom. Um, there's a walk-in closet in the in the left-hand corner there, and a wardrobe uh, cabinet built in that's that's put in there. If time permitted, we would we would get to the the wardrobe. I don't expect to get to that today. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you that this is just basically a custom tall cabinet with some cabinets above and some open cabinets with shelves in it. We are going to take a look at a little bit of customization on the vanity side. So you will get exposure to that with our center cabinet that has some shelving in an open shelf area. Um, looking back the other way, you'll see that uh, it's basically a, a bathtub, a standalone soaker tub. Um, uh, some some variants in, in the different floorings that we have available uh, in this model. So I've gone from a tile to a hardwood. You can put room in the back corner there. We're gonna spend some time. I'll just ask if you can keep your mics muted. I appreciate that throughout the class. Um, you'll also notice that we have a glassed in shower. That's something we're gonna start with today is uh, generating um, a shower wall, putting a door in that and such, okay? Uh, we'll either put a swinging door, but we might actually put a sliding shower door in today. All right, using some of the track hardware and the trolley hardware that we have available to you. All right, so um, we're not going to get likely to the point where we have all of the accessories on the shelves, but just want to give you an image of, as to where we're headed with it today. Hopefully, we will also get to putting in a little bit of wainscoting around the, uh, the bathtub and that kind of thing with the chair rail and such. All right, so let's get started. All right, we are going to um, just, I'm just going to click back to my... Uh, my floor plan and my image. I'm just going to get this image out of the way. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so as you can see, I've split my screen. Uh, you have the options with soft plan. Uh, I use multiple screens, but for today, since I'm sharing my screen, I've chosen to go with a split screen for the majority of it. Um, you can work on one screen and flip between the tabs at the top if that's what you choose. But um, ideally, it's nice to have the 3D up while you're working on the floor plan so you can see both. So I'm going to flip uh, just by clicking on the, the floor plan side, changing up here, going into drawing mode. <clears throat> you can see what we're starting with. Um, we have a walk-in closet. I've left it intact. I've left the built-ins in here intact. Aside from that, we are down to uh, bare walls with the ceiling and subflooring on the floor. This could be a remodel. This could be a new build you name it, uh, it could be whatever you choose. All right, I've made it a fairly roomy bathroom, um, likely bigger than normal, but it, uh, it gives us the ability to uh, show it a little bit better in 3D in, in our case for today. So what we're gonna start with is working in the shower area. With SoftPlan, we tend to tell you to uh, draw the way you would build it. 
um, meaning that you should draw in the order in which you would build in a lot of cases. Um, that's not always the case. It's not always necessary in something like this. You could start with the flooring. You could start with the plumbing fixtures. We don't really care. You can slide the flooring in underneath them afterwards. All right. Um, in this case, I do want to get the shower walls in because they are going to delineate the flooring somewhat for us as opposed to um, the, the tile that's out in the bathroom versus a tile that might be in the shower area. So without further ado, we're going to get to start by drawing a wall. Now, in soft plan, we actually have a predefined wall called glass shower wall panel. Um, we can draw that in. And what you're going to see is that it is just the just the glass, nothing but the glass. So if you draw this in, you can kind of see it over here in the 3D. It's fairly translucent. Um, the lighting that I have in here right now is minimal uh, or nil. <laughs> so um, one of the first things we will get to once we get the shower in is getting some light fixtures in there because Softland does rely on the light symbols that you draw within the program to cast the light in the model. Uh, that's what makes it so realistic. It's not just going to use just ambient light, which is just a general lighting setting uh, to glow the, the the interior of the model up. That is an option, but I'm going to be using my uh, DirectX 12 engine today. Um, it's an exceptional uh, improvement, part of version 2022, that um, once you get some light sources in here, everything will just pop. It'll start to really come to life. So without that, without... Um, having that those light fixtures in there obviously the walls look a little bit bland but uh, that will that will change very shortly all right so by editing this shower wall just want to take you through some of the options that you have available to you um, this is something you would probably try to do on your own uh, if you edit the wall and you go to definition you have the ability right in here to create a wall that might have a curb underneath it for today, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. I'm going to go to copy on the bottom. I'm going to uh, just rename it uh, shower, glass shower wall with curb and pick OK. OK. Um, and that's the wall that we are actually in now. So what we want to do is add a material. So I just want to put a curb in underneath it. Like I said, I'm going to keep it simple today. I'm just going to put a solid in underneath it. Um, we may need to turn that solid on in the 3D if it's not already turned on in visibility because they're not typically, not, uh, they're not necessarily turned on. They might be for a purpose that's not necessary in 3D. But what we're going to do is start with the size of the actual curb. I'm just going to come up with some numbers. I'm going to go four inches for a width, four inches for a height. I'm going to have its horizontal start. So from the outside towards where it starts, it's going to start at zero. Um, its vertical start is going to be zero, meaning it sits on the floor. But that means I'm also going to adjust some of the other heights for the, the glass itself. So I'm going to make it 92 inches. I'm going to make its horizontal start um, one inch and its vertical start. It's going to move up to four inches to sit on top. And by doing all this, you can see in the cross section view, the changes being made as, of, as they're done. It's quick. It's easy. All right. Um, <clears throat> we also have the ability to add a material in to help with uh, visualizing this in a plan view. By, by adding just the glass and the curb, right now, as you can see, this green dashed line indicates what I'm cutting through when I look at this wall in plan. So all I'm going to see is the glass. I won't see where the curb is, and the curb most likely needs to line up with the walls that it joins with. So what you can do then is come in here and pick a, a material called none from the list. And none is exactly as it, it sounds like it is. It, it's nothing, right? So um, its width is going to be four inches. I'm going to leave it sitting right on top of the curb. And it's going to basically uh, give us an indicator as to where the edge of the curb is. So it is four inches wide, um, 92 inches high. So it's exactly the same height as the glass, which is fine. It's sitting in that void. It could be the total height of the wall. It doesn't really matter. It's a material that does nothing. That's based on the name, none. You guess that. All right, so its vertical start is four inches and its horizontal start is zero, meaning it's flush at the outside. All right, if I move over to the right-hand side here, um, I could change the color of this wall. 
the, the wall lines that show up for it, if I wanted to make them something to differentiate them, um, that's totally a personal choice. And you can also select a wall tech or like a line texture that goes with this or line style so that you can differentiate that it's not really cutting through a solid material. It's just, it's just a line indicator to alignment indicator at that point. All right. The other thing we want to do on this wall is go into the options. This is the important piece. In the options for any wall that has a part height material in it, being a material that doesn't go the full height, what you want to do is go into the transition material height field. It's automatically figured out that our transition material would be at four inches because we have a change in materials at that point. So that's that's exactly what we want it to be, but we do need to turn that on. All right. So if you had a wainscoted wall that has uh, brick for three feet and siding for five feet above it, you would want to put the transition in there so that you can you can control that height on an edit. It's not hard coded into the wall definition at a, a certain height. You can set it at that height and then you can modify that on the definition or on the edit of the wall, which we'll see in just a moment. OK, so with this all done. I can go back to materials just so we can see it. That's what it looks like in plan. This is what it looks like in section. There's our little curb. As I was saying, I kept it simple. I went with a solid material for the curb. Um, I have done another wall for materialist purposes to count the tile, count the backer board and this, the, the stud framing, uh, plates and framing in that, in that wall as well. I didn't want to get into that with, with you today. That would take up most of our time. So what I've done in lieu of that is done a solid material. The thing to remember is that the solid material does not necessarily count in soft list. So you won't get a, an accurate count for any of the materials that go on the solid material. It's more for a graphical uh, representation in 3D. Okay. If you want to do more with it, then yes, we, we go into the wall definition. We basically take a wall and shrink it down to make a curb, which is just a built up curb. You can put your curdy board or your back or your cement board and then your tile on top of that. And then we can count every piece of that. OK, so for today, I've just kept it simple. If you need more details on that, certainly touch base with us and support at a later date and we can help you with that. OK, so what I've done, I'm just going to pick OK. I'm going to. Um, that one has already changed. It's asking me for an alignment. Uh, I'm OK with whichever alignment it has right now because I actually have to flip this the other direction. So I want it to have the outside facing out towards the bathroom and away from the shower. So we will be making a change to the alignment anyway. Um, so right now it's just going to go the outside of current, outside of current and pick OK. I'm going to do the same thing for this one. So I'm going to change this one and change it over to should be right at the bottom. Okay, I think that is ours. Yep. All right, and you can see them popping up in 3D. So I do have the solid turned on. If that wasn't the case, you come in here, go to your materials, uh, look for solids on, on your walls uh, in here, and it may have been unchecked, in which case you would have the, the view of the glass, but you would have a gap underneath it. So make sure that's turned on, okay? We don't have a texture applied to it yet. That comes a little bit later uh, as we're working through this. All right, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to edit this wall. There's a couple things to clean up in here. Um, right now, the uh, exterior is facing down. As we're looking at it in plan, I want it to face up. So that means the glass is just going to be closer to the outside. I'm going to pick OK. I'm going to right click. I'm going to repeat that change to this one to see if it flips to the other. It didn't. So it's thinking it's already in that direction. So I'm going to pick, pick that and change it to left. Now what we want to do is align the wall with the studs that we see here. Now remember, when you're looking at a floor plan, unless you've got the remodeler wall list showing up, um, you're going to be seeing the studs. So you can assume that there's a half inch drywall or a half inch backer board on top of this stud that you would want to align with. So what I can do to start, and this is just how I would do this, I would go to the move commands at the top, use the align to edge, click on this edge, which is the outside of stud, and then click with on the edge of the curb. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing down here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to align with this edge and then click that. That'll line that up. Over here, I'm not so concerned about it, but at this side, I am concerned about having it line up perfectly because my tile is going to continue straight across on this surface and it would look bad if I had a half inch jog in it. 
So in order to move that, click the move command, drop your cursor on top of the wall. This is a trick that we use. Hit the home key on your keyboard and then just watch the tape measure in the top. And depending on how far in you are zoomed, if you look up, I can't really move up there right now to show you. Um, move that down again. Done. And pick home. Okay. So that's going to move the face of the curb out in line with what would be my drywall, which you could you could imagine would be a half inch out from that. Okay. So <clears throat> Next thing we want to do is zoom back out so we can see our entire shower again. Uh, now we have a wall delineating the shower pan, the floor pan from the bathroom area. The next thing I want to do is actually extend this wall up a little bit taller so you have a little bit of privacy in the shower from the windows if they were fully closed. Um, and then we can have it step around the corner and then step down to a four inch curb around the corner where we'll place our door. So in order to, to do that, the easiest way is to go to a race, pick part of race, click on the wall where you want to break it. So I'm going to click right about there and click again. All right. I'm then going to edit this wall segment and it should only highlight that top little piece, which it does. This is where the transition portion of the wall definition comes in. Move on up to the transition field. And right now we've got the transition at four inches where we had it defined right in the wall definition itself. All right. What we're going to do then is change that up and I can make that five feet. All right. I don't want to slope anything. That's your other option there. All right. And pick OK. I'm going to do an edit, repeat edit, and I'm going to click on the wall around the corner. And you can see that now both of those walls are going up. All right. What we might end up with is a little bit of a funky corner in here. If I was to zoom in, I'm sorry, I just gotta click on here, move that over. Um, we can kind of see that they're they're overlapping. The reason for that is that we have three walls all intersecting in a corner, and they're kind of fighting over who should clean up the corner. So here's a new lesson again. Um, if you go into your um, your tools. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong. There we go. <laughs> um, reduce wall joint tolerance is found under tools. Now, one thing to remember when you have a split screen, and you're going to see me forget occasionally, is you need to click on the tab to get the proper toolbar that relates to whether it's in 3D or in plan. Okay, so right there, I was looking for a command that wasn't available in 3D. Um, so that's bad on me. But you just go to reduce wall joint to tolerance click on that corner. I'm going to adjust this out of the corner a bit. I might zoom it in a little bit closer so we can see what we're doing. And you can see that move out. That allows this to clean up to itself. The, the two walls will clean up and then I can adjust this one back in to the, the connection. Okay. So I'm going to go in to there and that will clean that up for us. All right. So with that done, I'm just going to zoom back out a little bit we're going to put in a door into here so we're going to go to draw opening i uh, will go to uh, out of windows go to interior doors oh there it is it moved to the top because i've used it so it's sliding shower you've got shower doors which are your your hinged doors you've got sliding shower doors as well so i'm going to put a fairly um, narrow sliding shower door into this and pick OK. And I'm going to drop that right about here. And I'm going to move it to the other side. There we go. All right. And then let's see what we've got out here in 3D. May not be perfect just yet, but we're getting there. So there you go. All right. Once we can, once we get that in, we can edit that door. Again, um, I get the door. There we go. And we can go into the um, 
treatment. And under treatment, you can turn on the track and the trolley. And you can pick which ones you want. So I've just gone with a simple track. A simple shower track might even be better. Um, and a simple uh, shower trolley to, to finish that off. All right. If I could just ask that everyone keep their mics muted, I'd appreciate that. We are recording today. Thank you. Backed up into the wall. There you go. So that gives you an idea. Now, you can probably notice the one thing that we haven't done with this door that we'll need to do as well is click on the door, go into the plan view settings, enable the offset option, and then set the bottom of wall to bottom of opening. So just for those of you who haven't been fam become familiar with how this works, uh, you have three different ways of, of applying the vertical offset of a door or a window, any kind of opening in a wall. Um, they all relate to each other. It's just a matter of which way is easiest and what makes the most sense at the time. It, of course, we're working with a door and we want to move it up from the floor. So it makes sense to go to the bottom of wall to bottom of opening. If I set that to 4.125 inches just to get it up four inches in a bit, that gets it up over top of the curb and, and it doesn't, it no longer cuts the curb out for us. Okay. So that does that for us. All right. All set. Next thing we want to do, I'm just going to pick okay on that. We've come along quite well on this, this piece of the, the, the bathroom. Uh, it, don't, it might not look that great yet because we haven't applied any textures to it or added the, uh, the flooring and such like, uh, to it, but we're going to move into that next. So next thing we're going to do, I'm just going to go to file. I'm going to do a save. I like to do save all once in a while, just to make sure I don't lose my settings. Uh, the other, the other, the only other thing you're doing, you can do with your door, um, which you probably noticed on some of my images is I like to have them open. So you have the option here to open in model. And if you don't want the sliding door to be fully open, uncheck the, uh, the door swing to four, it'll go to 45, or you can type in whatever amount you want it to go to. But if you uncheck it, it'll automatically go to 45. So 90 would be a fully swung open door or a fully slid open door versus 45 being half open. Okay. Um, so that just enhances the view. It shows it shows the sliding door a little bit better because you see both panes of glass overlapping each other at that point. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna slide into the, the plan here again, but this time we're gonna change our mode from drawing into interior mode. And I apologize for the size. I've got a large monitor. The, the text does become quite small, even though I enlarge it as best I can. So just know that I'm going to my mode selector in the top right corner, just may not be as easy for you to read as, that is, as it is for me. All right, so I've left the hardwood in this area as, as it was. Um, we're gonna put some hardwood at this end where the tub is. We're gonna put some hardwood at this end as well, where the uh, walk-in closet and the armoire, if you like, the built-in built cabinets are, the wardrobe. Uh, we're gonna put tile in the, in the um, shower area and into the toilet area, which will um, differentiate the, the shower from the floor and the, in the bathroom area. So um, just to explain some of the other options you have available to you, obviously you can use the room command to add all of your interiors as well. Uh, we strongly encourage that. It's a way of adding all your paint to your walls, your baseboard, your chair rails, your crown molds, uh, your flooring and your ceilings all in one single click. Um, I'm just, I'm just staying away from it today because I do want to, um, uh, differentiate different walls uh, throughout here and I didn't want to paint the entire thing and then I have to take the paint back out. Now if I had also flooded this area here with a room I would paint the entire outside of the walls with an, an auto trace and that would paint right over top of my glass uh, shower doors as well so or shower walls. So that's not something you'd want to do but you can also use the room command erase the ones you don't want or turn them off and then go back and add them in separately in interior mode but room mode basically is a quick and easy way to apply all those items that you would add in interior mode as well as in ceiling mode uh, with a single click and it also gives you um, i'll just pop it up here if you're not using room mode you should be it gives you a drawing that is great to show the customer as a presentation drawing with the solid walls and the room names uh, as part of that as well we also actually add a light fixture into the majority of the rooms that would get a, um, a light fixture. So that 
instantly adds in your uh, just basic necessities for lighting, and then you can modify those or uh, add to them, augment them as you need to. But for today, what we're going to do is I'm going to go into flooring and I'm going to put in hardwood one. I'm going to do a manual trace on this as opposed to an auto trace. Manual trace meaning I, I want to show it where I want the edges to go. Uh, an auto trace looks for an enclosed area and it will flood the entire room, as I, as I said earlier. So I've got my snaps on right now, so you'll see them up on the screen. They're not totally necessary, but they can be helpful. Um, I'm just going to go across. So they find corners, midpoints, perpendicular points, that kind of thing. Um, I'm also going to drop one down here, so it's going to go across. I'm going to run it underneath my cabinets. That's totally up to you if you choose to go along the edge of the cabinets or under them. It depends on how you build. All right. Um, I'm also going to put in um, on the floor, I'm going to put in tile two. So I'm just going to pick in tile two. So these are predefined. Um, this number is not limited to 20 any longer. You just keep adding new floor type to this as you want. Um, as well, I haven't gone through and renamed any of these. As you're going to see, you're going to see finishes that just have the generic names to them. They're fully um, customizable. You can add whatever finish names you want to this. So it might be different grades of hardwood. It might be different grades of tile or um, that ha what have you. And you can update those as you'd like. All right. For today, I'm just using tile two. We don't have that many finishes to worry about. So I'm going to run the tile two through here to this corner and across and up and there you go and that's going to carry into here i could also do um tile two and i can do an auto trace on it and just pop that into the the toilet area as well uh, i'm going to go to tile one and i'm going to do an auto trace on that to add flooring into the shower area and it, that's how quickly and easily that can go in all right. Um, on the walls in here, we're going to go to wall covering, and I'm going to use the um, ceramic tile one. Um, it's just one that I already had configured. But there again, there's two different tiles. There could be more. Uh, we've just put in some to get you started. So I'm going to pick OK. I'm going to do a manual trace on this one as well. So I'm going to zoom it up just a little bit. So I want to start here. And I'm going to carry it all the way out to here. I'm only putting it on the walls because I, it's not going to pick up on the height differences I need out here. So I'm going to apply that same texture to the solids that are here to uh, match those up. Okay. So if I wanted to do that in the 3D, the quickest and easiest way, I could edit the, the textures on that, that wall. So I went through and um, actually, I, I just edited the wall. I want to edit the actual texture. So I've gone through the open door of the shower, which is just a bit of a trick. If you if it's open, you can you can select the wall behind it. If the door was closed, I would be getting the door every time I tried to edit in that area. So in here, I have it set to a um, Mosa tile. So we have a, a a very large number of textures as we do symbols in the program. We're constantly adding to this as we as we find new stuff that manufacturers have available to us to uh, to make available to you. Um, this is totally something you can do as well. If there's a manufacturer that you like, it might be a regional one that we don't have uh, that's only available in your area. It could be brick, it could be roofing, it could be tile, flooring, what you name it. You're just looking for a, a texture that tiles well, which means that it, it goes edge to edge and doesn't show seams in it when you're putting it up on a texture, as a texture on there. Um, Something like the floor tile here, that could be one texture just for the box because it doesn't really matter if they repeat because they probably are identical. Uh, when you get to something more rangy like the tile that I have in the back here, um, if it was a repeating pattern, you would pick up on it quite easily, all right? But um, that's something you can pick. We do like the Mosa tile there. There's lots of selections in here. Uh, you can see them. Uh, so don't don't think that you're stuck with the ones that are automatically configured. They're just there as a placeholder and then you can come in and change them as you like. Okay, so I'm going to go with this texture. Um, and, and what I want to do is make that texture, take that texture and apply it to the solids. So there's a tool for that. 
up here on the top, you can pick or up on the um, on the file menu in 3D. Um, surface copy paste is the command. So you pick on that. Now you pick on the texture that you want to copy. So I'm going to slide through that door. I'm going to click on the wall and then I'm going to click on the solids and that will apply that same texture to the solid that we have on the walls. All right. Okay. Um, I'm also going to apply this wall texture to um, the wall behind the, the vanity, but I'm not going to do that just yet. We're going to get the vanity drawn first so we have something to, um, to line it up with when we do it and put some shelving in there as well. All right. So I want to keep moving along here. So we're just going to go file, save, save all. I'm going to add in a couple um, other fixtures. Obviously, we can paint up the walls as well um, in here. I'm not going to get into the baseboard just yet, but um, other things that you can do in in interior mode are um, you can do your chair rail. I'm going to put a chair rail around this back part because it's going to be the starting point for our um, our wainscoting that's going to go around here. Okay, I may have to adjust the lengths of it a little bit as I get the vanity placed, but this gives you a starting point. Um, I can also do a uh, wall covering. Let's do a paint one. I'm going to start it here. I'm going to carry it all the way around. Here again, I don't want to do an auto trace because it will um, cover up my, my glass on my shower. So I don't want to do that. All right, so you won't be able to tell, but it's been painted, <laughs> right? Um, and then we're going to do another wall covering. And this time I'm going to pick something from anywhere in the list. I'll just pick wall covering 25, pick OK. Here again, I'm going to trace just this piece where we put the hardwood and carry that around and finish that off. I'm going to say yes. Now I'm going to edit the second one that I put in this area. I'm going to right click on it. And if I click on right click on anything in the plan, it's either going to show me just the one item that I clicked on, or if there's multiple items in that spot, it's going to give me the list. So this is like a locating tool for you. So right click and I say, okay, well, there's two wall coverings, a chair rail and the flooring polygon. So it's really hard to differentiate one from the other. So I right click on it. I pick the wall covering 25 and then it says, what do you want to do with it? And I'm going to edit it at that point. I'm going to change the full coverage to a partial coverage. So you can see it's going all the way up now on the on the 3D. Um, I want to set that to like two foot eight inches because I think that's about where my chair rail is. Perfect. All right. And we can change the coloring on this as well once we get into the 3D and uh, dress that up a little bit. All right. So that's got that place. We can all, like I said, we can adjust the lengths on that as we need to, as we uh, want to tweak it a little bit further later on. Okay. In that area, you can obviously add your baseboards. Um, I'll just go with a standard. And here again, I don't want to go into the shower area, but I would click around wherever I painted those walls, basically. And there you go. And you've got your baseboard in. Likewise, you can put crown mold wherever you need to and finish that off as well. Okay, next thing. Um, let's get out of interior mode and go back to drawing mode. So drawing mode is basically where you are going to uh, do the majority of your work. Uh, it's where you're going to add symbols and such. Um, I'm going to just add in a couple of the uh, plumbing symbols that we might want to put into this area and into the shower. Uh, the vanity, once we get it placed, we're going to work through putting our basins and our, our faucets on that as well. Okay, so we're doing well for time. Um, there's a lot to cover here. So I'm going to go to draw symbol and I'm going to pick, um, well, while we're in here, I'll put the, I'll put the carpet down. Uh, no, I'll get that a little bit later. Let's take a look at tubs. So I'm going to go to tub. Um, when you do a search down here with any keywords, so when you're creating your own symbols, it's a really good idea to um, put in um, the symbol tags, we call them, uh, which are search words, meaning that we, we automatically search on the folder name and the symbol name, if you know it. Uh, but we also put in other things like tub or you know just general terms because that may not show up in the name necessarily. I'm going to go into manufacturer. I'm going to go to Kohler. 
baths and pick one of the ones from in here. I think the one that I was using was um, uh, a K1165. So if I really wanted to, I could come in here, I go 1165 and, and see what that comes up with. Well, that's just a freestanding tub. And if I wanted to place it, I can do so over here. It was waiting for me to add it over there. Let's come back in. And if I use the little um, the locate tools, that will help me to line it up with the midpoint of the wall and then click again to place it. And there it is. Once you've done that, you can obviously pick it up and move it away from the wall a little bit as you like. All right. If I want to put a tub filler on this, I can go back into symbol. Um, I can do tub filler, filler, something like that. Uh, go to manufacturer, soft plan plus, I believe the Rizzo has some, oh, those are pot fillers. Uh, there's hands grow bath. I'll do a single handle. So there's some different ones. Here's one here. I can click to place it, turn my F12 off, which is my lock. And that will allow me to spin that around a little bit. And I'm probably going to have to move that out a bit because I think it's going inside of the tub a little bit, just guessing at where the placement was. All right. So the other thing you can do once you've done that, you can edit your symbol. It looks a little tall uh, for the tub that we have selected. It might have been better for a claw foot or something like that. You can come into the symbols. And I do this quite often. Um, drop these down to like two foot six. Um, if you check the as maintain aspect ratio, every time you change one of the fields, the other ones will change to maintain the, the ratio relative to each other. Okay, but if you don't want that, you just wanted to chop this one down, then you can just check the one that you want to change. Okay, and pick okay. All right, a um, couple things to add into the shower. We can go to uh, symbol. Here, I think we are going to look for um, something from the Brizzo library that's going to match what we put on the actual um, uh, vanity. So I'm just going to type in Odin because I know that's the library. And if I click up here, I, it'll, it'll show me that it goes to Brizzo. And so I can pick any one of these. I'm just going to pick um, a rain shower head that comes out of the wall there. I'm going to pick the, um, the wall mounted controls, drop those there. And last thing for the shower, if I wanted to drop in an opening, like a niche into this wall, I can simply just do that by going to the um, opening libraries under niche. We have round top, curved top, like arc tops. We have square ones. I'm just going to put one, oh, I don't want cased. Um, Let's do an eight, uh, 12 by 18, and you just click on the wall where you want to place it. Okay. And if I can get that spun around, there we go. Let's zoom in a little bit. It's not showing up there. There, it's way up there. So I'm going to edit it a little on the high side. There it is. All right. Offset that. Let's put it up about four feet. And there. Okay. You can obviously modify that slightly. It's going to show up better once we get some lights in here as well. If I wanted to move anything around, so let's say I think the shower head's a little bit low, click on it, slide it up the wall. Okay. And just do a quick regenerate to get it to, to reposition. There it goes. All right. I think it's time we better get some lighting in here and uh, take a look at our vanity. So I'm just going to move back out. We're pretty much done with the shower. We've done a lot with the tub as well. Um, I want to get some lighting into this model, though, so we can see a little bit better, a little bit clearer. Um, so what we're going to do is go into the plan. We can do this in drawing mode or we can do this in electrical mode. It really doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to work in drawing mode, it's just fine. I'm going to go to uh, electrical. I'm going to go to electrical symbols. I'm going to go to ceiling lights. Um, and the 
light that we want to put over top of the tub is um, it's a uh, it's from the seed designs pend, uh, pendants but it's um it's it's more like a chandelier so we're going to go into manufacturers and soft plan plus remember if you are a subscriber to soft plan plus you have a, a very much larger um, selection of symbols textures and such that we upload regularly um, and you just have to touch the library and it downloads to your computer so you have access to it so do uh, consider that if you're not a plus subscriber it does give you access to different features through support as well but much um, much improved uh, textures available to you okay so this is the one that we're going to add in here click OK I'm just going to place that and there again my snaps kind of help me to line that up over the middle of it this is going to be extremely bright <laughs> when we put it in so just be prepared that um, this model is going to become very bright with this particular light um, what we are going to do is go in and dim it down um, what you what you have in here is I believe they are set up at around I forget 80 or 500 or something lumens each but there's a bunch of them so <laughs> these would really be small LEDs that you would um, uh, you wouldn't have that many in here but just having that one light in there you can see the difference in the reflections and and how stuff starts to pop on your model so it's starting to come to life for you um, we're going to continue to draw some other symbols in here before we uh, move on to modifying those settings though so i'm just going to take you through um, in the ceiling lights we're going to put in some four inch can lights that would be your your typical ones you would turn on when you woke up in the morning you came in here and you turned on some lights you're likely going to turn on the can lights I'm going to go, I'm going to draw one. I'm going to go to move. I'm going to copy that one light over to here. I'm going to do uh, just one of those. I'm going to do a copy block. Now I realize that I'm not being very accurate with this, but in the interest of time today, um, I'm not going to spend the time to draw these exactly where they would go, but that is something you would do and you can dimension to these and place them accordingly. All right. Um, I'm just going to stretch this one down and I'll do three copies of this. Yeah, it's probably good. All right. And then we'll copy these ones across like so. I'll do one copy of those and I can, I'm just sticking with the block copy just because I already have it selected, but I can drop one of those in the shower area as well. Okay. And wow, we have a very bright model now. So we can also add some pendants over top of the vanity if we have time. If we don't have time, we've got lots of light already, so we don't need to. But my model did have some pendants hanging over top of that. Hopefully, we can get to that if we uh, get moving along here. So what we're going to do now is edit one of these lights, just so you can see where this is. Click on the Light tab. Go to Custom. You're going to see that it is already set to 2,900 lumens. So version 2022 has a lot more control of your lighting the brightness, the color of the lighting, even you can warm it up with some yellows and such. Um, it really enhances the, the model quite a bit. Um, but I'm going to drop these down to, I think, uh, 550 works, somewhere in that range. So it's, and this gives you some equivalence. So you're looking at just over a 40 watt bulb, basically, somewhere between a 40 and a 60, maybe a 50 watt. All right. Um, you're not going to see a big difference. You saw a flash on the screen, but I only changed one of them. So now I'm going to go to edit and I'm going to do a repeat edit box. And I can select any of the lights that are in here. <laughs> and that instantly changes it quite a bit. Now we still have some issues with this light here. So I'm going to come into this one, edit it. And in here, I'm going to go to the light tab. Um, oh, sorry, I missed light tab. Go to custom and let's change that one down to literally um 50 lumen lumens so they're really dim little bulbs and pick okay and that makes it a lot more realistic okay we have a translucent setting on the globes if you like that are on that light fixture which help to um make it look like the light is actually turned on for those as well which is really nice all right so you can see some reflectivity off the walls and such and off the flooring just by putting those lights in. All right, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spin around right about there. That's probably good. 
and we're going to get busy drawing the vanity in. So it doesn't take that long because uh, I already know which vanity pieces I'm going to put in. Um, but in reality, you'd probably be doing a little bit of playing, playing around with the sizes to see what fits your model. Okay, so I understand that it's going to be look a lot smoother here than it would likely be when you put them in because you're going to have to figure out which pieces you want to put in. But we are going to place in um, five different vanity pieces in to make one big unit. Um, I just want to do a quick save. Oh, sorry, I still think I'm in 3D. So there we go. Go to file, save. Told you I would do that. Save all. There we go. I'm going to go to draw now. I'm going to go to cabinet. Now in cabinet, just for those of you who haven't really used cabinets much yet, um, we have a list of manufacturers. Those are any of the manufacturers that actually have catalogs for us to feed from. There's a lot of great manufacturers out there that are full custom. So there's really not a lot for us to generate a catalog of cabinets from because every cabinet they make is made to a custom size. So that doesn't help us in putting something up for you to use. Uh, but there's a good list of cabinets in here that um, we try to make available to you. Um, what we have below that is base, desk, tall, vanity, and wall. So all different shapes of boxes, basically. Think of your, your cabinets as boxes with faces applied to them. The faces contain the doors and the drawer faces that we need to configure the cabinet to make it look the way you would want it to be and have the functionality that you want. So what we're going to start with is a vanity cabinet. So it's 30 and a half inches high, plus it's inch and a half countertop. So it's a 32 inch top height, typically. Um, whereas a base kitchen cabinet would be 34 and a half plus an inch and a half to 36 inch height, and two foot depth, whereas this one is a 20, uh, 21, inch, 21 inch depth with a slight overhang. On the, on the countertop. Okay, so uh, just a smaller countertop or cabinet. When you get to the tall cabinets, you're dealing with like a five foot cabinet that then you can place a wall cabinet on top of and that kind of thing, which is what I did at the back end by this walk in closet. Those are basically tall cabinets with a cabinet set up top and, a, and even another one up on top of that that could hinge to the top or what have you to uh, give you the, the functionality you like. Okay, so what we're going to start with. Um, the vanity type we already selected, so we don't have to go back to that. The shape is rectangular. The different shapes help you to fit into corners. They might be a blind corner. They might be a full corner. They might be an angled corner. Um, you name it. There's fillers in here. There's uh, angled fronts to go from different depths uh, across the face of a kitchen cabinet, that kind of thing. Okay, so we are just going to go with straight rectangular. Uh, the, what you select from here is your width, and we're going to start with a 24 inch, so it's just handy that that's what it was selected already. The vanity type already selected the depth and the height for us, but you can override that here. Offset is zero, meaning it sits on the floor, and the top height is 30 and a half inches, which is inconsequential because you're going to place the countertop on it automatically. Okay, but that helps you when you're dealing with wall cabinets and uh, tall cabinets you are going to be interested in the offsets and the heights of those cabinets to get them up on the walls. All right. All right. Uh, the cabinet face is more important, though. Uh, when we get into the cabinet face, it's important that you understand what we've done to this in the last version or two. Uh, we've split the typical faces out and added a specialty folder, which has a um, a very large number of different cabinet faces, not so much in the vanities, but even, even looking at the vanities, you can see how many specialties there are. These are all mostly here. You can see me beeping because I'm scrolling so fast. All right. Um, these are mostly here because the manufacturers have multiple configurations of faces for you. Um, you don't necessarily need to go in here. You can customize them yourself. So you don't need to go searching for the perfect one and get frustrated if it's not, doesn't, just doesn't happen to be there. We're going to show you how you can actually configure your own as well. So the one we're going to select from here is vanity. Uh, I'm going to do the two door, one drawer recessed sink. So that means it's got two doors, obviously. One drawer looking face at the top. It's a recessed, meaning that it has the rails around it as opposed to a flat face. And it has no handle, which is indicated by the sink at the bottom so that it, uh, it's a false panel. This looks like a drawer. Okay, so that's what we're going to place. All that said, I'm going to pick OK on this. You can leave this dialog open while you're drawing these. I'm going to try and get this as close to the door casing as I can. That's not too bad. We can always move this once we're done. Uh, this 
this set of cabinets should fit between the casings of between the door and that window. All right. The next cabinet I'm going to add, and that's why we leave this open. I'm just going to change the width to 12 inches. It thinks that I'm going to need a single door and a single drawer because it knows, knows that the double door doesn't fit there. But I'm going to change that style. I'm going to pick one of the three drawer options. So I can do a one over two recessed drawer option. Uh, pick OK on that. You do have to close that dialog out and place that one right next to the first one you put in. Go about half the width of the cabinet you're drawing away from the last one and we will locate it automatically. If you miss, the easiest thing to do is hit the backspace key and try again. Okay. Other than rather than erase it, go back through draw all over again. Just undo and try again. Okay. The next one we're going to add is a 21 inch. This one we're going to make a little bit more custom. So we're going to go into the styles down here and I'm going to pick, um, well, we'll pick this one. I'll do the open with two drawers. Okay. And I'm going to pick okay. And I'm going to drop that in at 21 inches wide, making sure I'm still there. And if I go back up to my 12, it thinks I'm going to do that same one again. So I'm going to pick the one over two drawer recessed. So that's one way to do it. You can go back and select them. I want to show you the other way to do this. So if I was already done and it's like, oh, I meant to draw one more. Remember, you can always go to draw, select, click on the cabinet you want, which is down at the end there, and click on it again to add it in. All right. Now, uh, the other thing to remember, when you're looking at a run of cabinets, you may need to explode them. Make sure you only explode them once so they just become individual cabinets. You don't explode the cabinets into their basic lines or anything like that. But by exploding the run, you now see all of the individual ones. And that's where I could have done the draw select and I would have known that I was picking the 24. Because it was on the end, it wasn't hard to tell that I was going to pick the right one because it was down there. Okay. I'm going to move over to the 3D for this piece. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to click on this cabinet we have in here. And we're going to go down. Um, I'm going to pick on the face tab on this cabinet. Okay. So in when I'm editing cabinets, remember you have an individual cabinet. So here, vanity cabinets, the VD21. Um, and then um, cabinet run is the entire run. So at this, at this point, I could put in um, anything that applies to all of the cabinets, that kind of thing. So I, that's where I could change it to a... Um, painted gray, that kind of thing. It, it would be uh, something I could change on the entire run, okay? I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave it painted white. Um, here again, I can change the styles on these to uh, shaker style, that kind of thing as well, okay? Um, and you can just, you can go through the entire, entire run doing that, okay? Stick with the square flat panel for now. Uh, what we do want to do is go to the face option. I'm going to do a custom face option. So I don't necessarily want two drawers. I just want one. So I'm going to come down here and I can uh, remove a part. Okay. I can, if I want to put in a double drawer, I can remove that part and I can put an add part in and I could pick double drawer. So I'm just going to start mm -hmm. over with, with this pick, pick OK. So it's automatically putting it in on top. If you hover over the left-hand side, you get a little gripping hand on those little dots that are there, and that allows you to reorganize these. So you can literally add all the parts you need, and then you can reorganize them where you need to. All right? So I'm going to change it from a flat to a recessed. I'm going to check the, the fixed box over here and make it 8 inches. Okay? And so now I have a double drawer at the bottom, and the rest will scale whatever height I put in. So if I was make my my cabinet taller, it's a good idea to always have one that does scale so that it can absorb that difference in height. Okay. Um, it's not false, so it, it, they, they will have a handle, unlike the one above the, um, the doors on the sink face. Okay. All right, we're running out of time. I got to get moving along here. So I'm going to pick OK. Uh, we're going to edit that cabinet again. Um, going to the shelving option. I'm going to add in uh, three shelves, uh, two shelves, be good. Two fits nicely. All right. I'm then going to come to OK on that. Um, I'm going to edit one of the end cabinets. And we're going to put in, um, 
the vanity cabinet at the bottom here you can pick your different sinks and taps so i'm going to pick the sink that i want i'm going to put in a k2214 happens to be the one that's already selected for me which is great i'm going to do the same thing down here vanity cabinet sink okay uh, i'm also going to put in a tap on this one i'm going to put in the uh well, it's already highlighted it's the black widespread it's a brizzo That'll place that for me. I can repeat that change down to this one. Uh, I may need what sometimes will happen to you. So it's actually a good lesson for you here is the, uh, the, the symbols try to stack. What they want to do is stack on top of each other. I know that the offset for the sink is two feet, a half inch because I've had to move it down before. So that moves that down for me. The other thing you can do with this is, um, add the mirrors in that goes in between. And the last thing I want to get in here is put in our tile at the back and some floating shelves before we wrap up today. So I'm just going to put this in rather quickly, put in uh, a mirror. We're going to go with the standard mirror. I'm going to go 36 inches in height, pick OK, and repeat that change down to here. All right, and back on interior mode, so I'm going to come back into here. here we go. Interior mode. Now I can put in my wall covering. And I'm going to put in um, ceramic tile one. I'm going to snap from here to here mm -hmm. and right click to tell us I'm done. I do want to put one in at that point. Then I'm going to right click on that area. I'm going to pick on ceramic tile one and edit it. I'm going to uncheck the full coverage, at which point it should put in that, um, that piece for me. Actually, I went further than I wanted to on that. Um, I might adjust those in a little bit. I can drop that down to like 84 inches if I wanted to, that kind of thing. I can um, pick OK. I'm going to adjust it a little bit shorter. There. There we go. There we are. And the last thing I want to add in here is uh, in, in drawing mode. A little trick for putting in floating shelves is use your rod and shelf option. So under rod and shelf, you're going to use my snaps because I want to go between those two corners of those cabinets and drop it in. And when I'm done, I right click. So it looks like a closet rod, not really what I want, but I can edit that. No, I didn't get it. So I'm going to right click in that area. I'm going to go rod and shelf and edit because I didn't get the first, the first try. Okay. I'm going to turn off the rod. That's the one thing we know we don't want is a rod in that area. We're going to change the uh, shelf offset to say three foot eight. So that is the offset to the first one. All right. So three foot, eight inches is just a guess for me. Um, the depth, I'm going to change it to like nine inches. The thickness, I'm going to beef them up to like 1.5 inches. And I'm going to put in three of them at a spacing of 12 inches. So basically, just answer all those questions as you go down. And there you go. And that will drop those in for you. To finish off in here, we can go to our draw electrical, uh, go to uh, electrical symbols, um, ceiling lights, soft plan plus contemporary. I like the contemporary four. I'm just going to pick OK. And I'm going to drop one in here. And I'm going to copy that along. So I'm going to go to move, copy. I'll pull one down to here. And in here, since I want to put four of them along here, I'm going to say equally spaced between, and I'm going to put in three copies. So I want four total. And pick OK. All right. I could move those over to the ends of the, the shelves as well if we needed to. The last little trick I want to show you on, we may not really like the color of the um, tongue and groove that we got there. That's just whatever it happened to be. So what we want to do is go into the 3D, go to Edit Surface, 
click on that surface. All right. And right now it's saying display texture, but I want to keep the texture, but I want to display a color on it. So at what, which point I can pick a color from that. And in the lighting options, I can increase the release relief depth. So you can see if you're, if you're looking over here, when I turn the relief depth on, it picks up on the texture that's applied to, to that, which is the tongue and groove texture. And it's, it's basically like you've painted over the wood. So you lose the, the grain, but um, we will use that uh, relief depth to, to make it look like a, like a texture that, that actually has the tongue and groove applied to it. All right. So let's take a look at our final product. Not too shabby. Oop, slide over there a bit. Obviously, these lights are also quite bright still. We haven't uh, had a chance to tone them down yet. Oops. Edit. Click on the light. Go to the light option. Go to custom. They are set up pretty high. So if I was to set them down to like 500, um, you can automatically see that drop quite a bit. Pick OK. I'm going to do an edit, repeat edit box, window these, and there we go. All right, there's only a couple of other little things that we were going to add in in the back corner over here. I can do them really quickly if you have a couple minutes. Um, draw symbol. Um, here, if I wanted to put in a decor, picture, something like that, um, go to the manufacturers. Crate and Barrel has some that are quite nice. Uh, just pick from that and then drop that on the wall. All right. And there they are. Um, I've also brought some in that, uh, some towels and such like that, which um, I had hoped I'd have a chance to actually take you through bringing one in, but another day. Um, so if you wanted to put something like hanging hooks, that kind of stuff, um, I think I call them robe hooks. Uh, it's from a company called Egua. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so that's what I'm going to pick. And I'll drop those on this wall here as well. And there you go. All right. You can add benches and such as well. So something else that I, I had on the original model was um, a museum bench. That's it there. And you can change the colors. Don't don't be um, stuck on just the, the appearance based on the colors because they are editable. And I've already changed that one at one point to a gray color, but I'm also going to change its width to say three feet so that it fits a little better. And there you go. All right. So with all that done, uh, I hope you've gotten um, some really good tips out of today's class. Um, obviously, the other accessories are available that you, you can draw. Um, I, as I said at the beginning, I didn't think we were going to get into all of that today because there's a lot to cover. But you simply type in something like towel and you'll get um, lots of different options available to you, at which point you can, you can pick those up and drop them on your drawing wherever you like. Okay. And there they are. Once you get them on there, there again, the color isn't that important. You can edit those and apply a color from somewhere else using the surface copy paste to get those done for you. So let's just uh, slide that over a bit. So there's our, our model. I'm um, just going to back it up a little bit, see if we can get without being in the wall. There we are. All right. Um, you can see some reflectivity in here. Some of the lighting options that are available to you are um, in your options, um, mode options. As I said, we've been working in Direct, DirectX 12, meaning that my lighting, uh, my ambient lights can be pretty much dropped right down now because I've got all the light fixtures inside and you can see how that brings that to life. Um, use your tone mapping to help with the brightness. Some people like to have it a little bit bleached out. Some people like it somewhere in the middle. I like it around 70, 75. All right. Uh, realistic while still looking uh, nice and crisp. 
okay? With the DirectX uh, 12, um, don't be afraid to crank your anti-aliasing up. That makes it clearer. Uh, as far as face options uh, go, make sure your reflections are turned on because it can handle it, as you can see. Um, so I've got my, uh, my face, my uh, my face options on turned on properly and i can also try something called um, uh, path tracing which basically bounces the light around uh, you can choose the number of bounces but if i do a regenerate you will see how it it generates and it just gives you another an, another type of view so you can see this little counter up here as it gets to 100 so i only did 100 which is a very low number um, it gives you a more so, a, a softer view of that that image all right so anyway i hope you've learned lots today um i did not en uh, end up putting in the area rug but there again pick an area rug and scale it down to the size you want that's all it takes uh, you don't need to be hung up on the size or the colors of anything you can set them once you get them in the model all right so thanks again for joining me today uh, if you do want to uh, cover any of this again in the future, it should be posted to our YouTube channel very shortly, uh, probably give it a few days. And um, if you have any questions at all, don't be afraid to reach out to our support department. They're all very good at answering your questions and uh, we're wel we welcome your calls. So uh, thanks again for joining me. Uh, sorry it took you a little bit over time, but uh, I hope you got lots of information out of today, and uh, we look forward to uh, having you in one of our sessions again in the future. Have a great weekend.